Are you an entrepreneur? Are you brave enough to face the might of the making moves charges? It's no use standing there and thumb sucking an answer. Mm. Work five hours a day. Yes. You're lazy. Have you taken samples to them? Uh, no, um, we haven't. I do feel a little bit disrespected, and that's why I'm, I'm a little bit angry. Is there any of you who are the business model leader? Do you want to pitch for 50,000 rand cash injection into your business? The stage is set for you to be part of this amazing opportunity for young entrepreneurs. One thing I can tell you is that corporates are looking for innovative. I think Stuff. this is a shocking idea as a corporate gift. I love the, the mug. Yeah, as, there's as, a, lot as a cute gift. Do. Yeah, but there's like, a lot of other emojis you can gift, do. I think it's a shocking no, idea. Anything. I can rest my bottom dollar that her competitors are bringing this in from somewhere else. I think there is a market for this. I really do. I think corporates are spending a lot of money. They really are spending a lot of money to actually get a cohesive environment. And, and people, there, <laughs> look, people. I don't know if I agree. Originating in Japan. In the early 90s, emojis developed as a way to convey emotions on emails. Since then, they have evolved into powerful characters within a fast growing millennial language. Usashali, a young and funky designer, Yenage, Usebono Gutigi, Angatata Logo, Akukula Zakele in Dumezul, Kulenkunda Lenage, and Aseben Zagion. Namtlange, we find out Gutiku Tata Ini, Uguzewena, Uzakelege, Ikamel Simem, Kulenkunda. My name is Sasha Libason and I'm the co-founder and owner of Emoji Mzanzi. What we do is we take your WhatsApp emojis and actually create realistic products from it. And what makes us so unique is that we actually include the client within the production process and actually make it according to your lifestyle, which makes it that much unique. Jongongbona <laughs> What sparked the idea for you to take these WhatsApp emojis and turn them into your business? So actually from like the get-go, I've always wanted to break into the fashion industry in a more quirky, fashionable sense. And I know that people are really emotional, but they don't know how to get like the message across. So I was like, why don't we take emojis, actually make actual realistic products so that people can express themselves in a more, you know, fashionable, sensible type of way. Yes, so yeah. What made you think this could be a viable business for you? Uh, for the fact that actually this is for the youth, mm -hmm. this will help them with even in corporates, it will actually help them express themselves, be more productive. And I just knew that actually if it's something for the clients and they actually need it and it helps them in a everyday type of use, it's going to be viable. Is this one of yours? Yes, this is actually. All right. Yeah. Looking forward <laughs> to see what you do here. Basically, this is where everything starts from scratch. Yes, ma'am. We come here, you do the whole sketching, figure out what emoji you're actually going to use, mm -hmm. and then from here is where we actually go to sourcing material. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Emojis is something that is out there, copywritten. Yes. And I know that you went through a situation with that. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about it, and how did you get over it as well? How did you fix it? Okay, so when we started off, I did find out about patencies, about copywriting mm. within South Africa. Because we were the first ones in South Africa. Mm. And then we went for a whole year being fine. They didn't want any royalties without it. Yes. Then we started having competition from China, oh, yes. who started doing the same thing we were doing. So then we had to switch it up and think, how can we make it, really make it South African? 
So now we're trying to include like your cultures, like your, Zol your Zulus, your Tosas, Pedi, Bura, Afrikaans, all of those to make it more unique and more, more South African. Who is your typical client today? At first, it was more your kids, aged from like four up to 10. Okay. And then, as soon as I posted on Facebook and like social media, I realized it's actually your more young adults, your yes. teenagers. So our clients now are more like your teenagers up to about, from like 12 mm -hmm. to about like your young adults to like 25. How I first found out Ngayo, oh, because I was going to see film in an advert. I was going to see some sort of a corporate video that I was going to advertise. I like buying easy impasses. I was going to see Only to find out when I went deeper, I found out that I was going to see the home deco, I was going to see home deco. It was a juve, you know, it was a way you can decorate it better than to an and only to find out to go to I wasn't wrong, man, it is not just nothing because yeah, the Bella Vela and a go SA homeowner is one of the brands that go to not decorate a bedroom. I want to an and I got the image like embroidered mm -hmm. and then we put the material together and then we have to start sewing yes, actually. Yes. Seems like it's quite a process to put together um, one of these emojis. Mm -hmm. So how many people do you work with or do who do you work with? Um, I work with five people. Um, two of them are the creative people. They come up with the idea, the figure of the emoji. The other lady does the embroidery for me. I do the sewing, but I also have another person that does the sewing for me when I'm not around. So now, um, Startup Capital. Mm -hmm. Funding, where did you get it from? Luckily, my brother helped me out with that. He gave me the Startup Capital and he said, from there you need to generate that yourself. Um, so luckily, I at least had some startup from my family and yeah, since then I've been growing it. So how much did he give you? He gave me 10,000. 10,000? Yes. And you bought what with it? Um, we basically bought machinery, we bought material, yeah. we paid the embroidery lady oh. and the graphics for actually making the emojis. So 10K went quite a long way then? Yes, it did. <laughs> and hopefully you've repaid your brother. Yes, I have, obviously. <laughs> I'm not entirely convinced that there's a market for your product. Mm -hmm. I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely convinced. Why is it that sales are not where they should be? Because I think it's more they don't know exactly what we do. lived a creative life from an early age. She was diagnosed with diabetes. However, with support from her family, coupled with her own burning desire to succeed, kept her ahead of the illness. Growing up with Sashi, before Sashi, it was just me and my sister. And, uh, you know, when we got the news that we are going to get a new baby, I wanted a brother, obviously. And got the news and it was a sister. I actually, I can remember when I was smaller, I walked out the room and I actually cried because I wanted a brother. When she was small, they were always around her. They didn't want her to sleep in her own bed. She must sleep between them and they always fought on who must hold her, who must carry her. And as she grew up, they usually make lunch for her in the mornings. But when they are together, they, they quite, they just go and click together. Like if, if, if Shosha 
need to go somewhere or need to do something, they're always there for, always want to participate. She got away with a lot of things because they always wanted just to love her. Our relationship with my siblings were from a young age. It wasn't that difficult um, because they always made sure they, that they like were around. But I think I'm more closer to my brother at times and then sometimes with my sister because I get more along with like guys. So um, with my brother, I can confide in him with certain things. With my sister, it's more the life decisions that like I would rather confide in her. diagnosed with diabetes was a hard hit. When Shasha was uh, diagnosed, it was actually on a, a difficult time. Uh, my wife was not at home. Uh, my mother-in-law, a week prior to that, my mother-in-law passed away. Oh, she was at school and uh, they played hockey. And apparently she hit her head against the power box and she passed out. When she was up, they just keep on playing. And when she got home, she complained about headaches. And um, so we took her to the doctor and we were very worried. And the doctor said, no, there's nothing wrong. And um, three days afterwards, she's still complaining about nauseous and uh, nauseousness. And we took her again and no. And then the third time when they took her, my mom passed away, so I was in Cape Town. And I said to my husband, just take her one more time to medic clinic. And there they discovered, and she was immediately in ICU. It's a real game changer, because now she can't eat this, she can't eat this food, she needs to keep her sugar levels. And you know when you're on a diet or something with your friends and they eat KFC and you're just the only one eating lettuce there, and you know, we can choose, like, oh, we're not going to eat this lettuce, we're going to you know, and you know, I do hear her now and again talk about, you know, why can't I eat what they eat and, you know, but I think she's four years, she's had it now for a long time, so she's, she's okay with it now. It's not like I'm dying, so I can't maintain it, I just need to go to a doctor. So it wasn't like a huge phase, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have a pretty party for myself. I was just like, okay, it's something new, let's adjust, let's just go forward. So childhood, I grew up in Verenigung, Alcom Park, um, born and bred, stayed here until I was 18. From like a very young age, I was into more creative side. Um, I love dancing, I love painting, singing, but never really fulfilled that. <laughs> I always used to draw a lot, I um, always used to like to create things from scratch. She was very diligent, she was very disciplined, I must say. I never had to tell her, go sit and, and study. She was really, really very disciplined with her studies. When she grew up, she started to do ballet. And she wanted to become a ballet teacher, or a dancer, and then a teacher. From a young age, I actually wanted to be like a dancer. Um, I danced since I was in nursery school. I wanted to be like a professional ballet dancer, hip hop dancer. And at the age of 16, I injured my ankle. And then that kind of like just swerved me off. Cause I could dance, but I like always had problems. So then um, from there, I wanted to be a fashion designer. And hence why I went to go study fashion designing. After graduating from fashion school, Sasha Lee wanted to break into the fashion and lifestyle industry in an unconventional way. Through Emoji Mzansi, Yenago Sewa Zilo Guza Kela Indu Mezu Lugi Ona Lengu Ndle, Goto Age, Upegene Nezi Nye Zinto Ezinge Zintle Glu Ona Lulu Hambo Luwake. Jenga Manjo Se Studio Se Tutlo Gzana No Peps, Ugu Mchela Ngo Guti Ima Api Amasu Ana Awe Yena Gazo Msiza Gutlele Pizinsi Laki Lindon Lombali. 
just arrived at Making Moves and I'm about to meet up with Pepsi, ready to see where my business will go. Sasha Lee turns emojis from WhatsApp and social media into functional, fashionable products for lifestyle use. Although Emoji Mzansi has been operating for over a year, Sasha still struggles with basic operational systems and establishing a market for her products. She's here to discuss her business challenges and we're going to talk about what she needs to do in order to get her business to the next level. Sasha Lee, welcome to Make Your Moves. Thank you. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Senior. Fantastic. Take a seat. Thank you. All right, so uh, you left your job. You were the head of marketing in a fancy company mm -hmm. and doing very well for yourself. Yes. And you started this emoji company. Yep. Do you regret it? No, not for an instant. Why not? Because I love working my own hours. I love doing something that actually matters to the community, to the world as a whole. And I'm very passionate about making people happy. And that's what my business does. Why, why do you think your business makes people happy? Because it's from an emotional point of view, like how they're actually feeling. I'm actually taking your emotions and bringing it out to a realistic product. To, do, to actually do that is really, it touches somebody. And once you see somebody actually having the product and how happy they are, you actually, okay, you actually did something quite well. Which of your products is your favorite? Um, mine are the scarves, because they're actually, they're quite functional. It's not just a normal scarf, it actually has place for like your hands or to put your cell phone or your pen. So most of my products are quite functional other than just having a scarf or having a pillow, basically. So what emojis have you got on the scarf? Um, it's basically whatever the client wants. Um, so if they want a sad face, a crying face, we do that according to whatever actually you want. So we're making it something for the individual. Okay, so you're not quite making money yet. Mm -hmm. Why is that? That's because production costs are really high, um, embroidery equipment wise, but also our market. Um, because our market is really broad, we could go from corporate to like your nursery school kids, but just trying to find that niche of, okay, this is how we're going to angle it, this is how we're going to make sure that that's actually what they need and this is how we can be the solution. That's just what the problem is and production is really, really quite high. Okay, but <laughs> you make a profit Per emoji yes, product? Per product. So it's fine. Yes. So once you have enough volume, you can drop your production costs. Mm -hmm. So your challenge really is market. Yes. Correct? Yes. So w what's the problem? Are you too spread? Are you trying to tap into too many markets, corporate, retail, individuals? You don't have a focus area yeah. and you're one person. Is, is that a potential challenge? Yeah. I think that's what the challenge is, is that we don't have a full on focus. We're trying too many challenge channels at once. So once we know, okay, this is the only channel we're gonna go for for about, let's say four months, and nail it, reach our targets, then we can go into another channel. But I think that's most, like our biggest challenge at the moment. I'm not entirely convinced that there's a market for your product. Mm -hmm. I've got to be honest, I'm not entirely convinced. Are people buying? Are they buying in their numbers? Mm -hmm. Why is it that sales are not where they should be? Because I think it's more they don't know exactly what we do. They know, okay, it's an emoji, okay, they're all going on the facet of, okay, it's trendy. But it's more on a, I would say, emotional state. Like if you have your toddlers who don't know how to express themselves, you use emojis and that would actually help them to relate to it. If you have like a student who, you have like the suicidal rates within South Africa is really high. So you use emojis in a sense of helping them to actually understand the root problem of why they want to do what they want to do. So I think more of our channels would be different. In corporate it's just with companies and the employees not being happy with what they're doing. So if you make it more expressive and using emojis or the cultural sayings that they have, it just helps with productivity and helps an employee be like wanting to actually work for this company. It's an emoji, dude. But like, it's, like, just... it's cool, it's a fun little product, <laughs> it's a pillow, it's whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Do you go to markets over the yes, weekend? Yes, we go to... So you go to different markets? Well, how, Pretoria, and how Joburg. Does that work? Um, basically, they send you out like a either a newsletter of the markets that's happening. You choose which one you want to go to. And how's that working in terms of sales? Great. Like we usually sold out like on weekends, but we like during the week we're quite quiet. That's you see what I'm saying about mm -hmm. like you need to be in places where, where people can walk in and buy. Mm -hmm. So when you're at a market, people come in 
and they buy the emoji, mm -hmm. you know, whatever emoji product it is, yeah. and they walk out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you off for a coaching session. Okay. I, I do think that the big focus, take, take the learning that you've got mm -hmm. from the markets that you do over weekends. Okay. That's your business. It's those markets and it's finding more places where you can just set up shop in the most inexpensive way possible. People can walk by, buy an emoji and duck. With lifestyle trends moving at the speed of light, I think Sasha Lee needs to do two things. One, she needs to decide who her market is. Two, she needs to create access to the market and create opportunities for people to walk in, buy an emoji product and walk out. I'm gonna send her off to a coaching session to help her clarify her vision and hopefully answer some of the burning questions that she needs to contend with in order to take her business to the next level. What I learned speaking to Pepsi is that I need to channel in which direction I actually want to go into um, regarding my target market and what I need in order for it to go to the next level regarding either distribution wise, retailing or are we going to stay with our individual clients. Okay, so what's yeah. your turnover monthly? Turnover monthly is about like 3,000. Okay, and what's yeah. your cost of sales? Our cost is about like 4,000. So you're losing money? Yeah. Sasha Lee has exciting ideas. If executed well, they could make Emoji Mzansi a force in the local fashion and lifestyle industry. She needs to identify the most effective way that 50,000 Rand could bring her closer to that position. Who is your market? Um, my market at the get-go was more your teenagers, mm. from like your 13-year-olds to about your 18-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Is um, there a reason for that, 13 to 18? Um, due to the fact that I did research on the suicidal rates, and okay. I saw that from that age, um, a lot of suicidal rates happen, and hence why I wanted to basically target them. Okay. Um, but I do have another target that is um, your toddlers. Toddlers. Yeah, toddlers like okay. from two to about six. She spoke about teenagers, um, which is a huge market. I mean, um, the number of, of de uh, uh, children or teens that are, are depressed are it's quite high. And having, having uh, emojis um, as, a, as a symbol of, of feelings, a symbol of expression, is, is something that really connects them to, to the world. I think she has something going. So what do you guys do well in? What we do well in, yeah. I would say basically the, okay, not the marketing, but more the creative side. Yeah. That's what we really well in. I think that's what comes up. Yeah. You know, distinctively mm -hmm. from your products, from what I've seen. Yeah. I think that comes up really distinctively. Mm -hmm. What I'm worried about is why are you trying to compete in the manufacturing um, market? It's not that I'm trying to compete, it's just that they, in a sense, we, if we could have that market that they have already, if yeah. we could bring that to us, why not? But uh, we might be killing ourselves in the end trying to compete in that Okay, sense. so what do you want to get from the manufacturing process? Um, what is it that you're looking for? Just for production, mm. basically, so that we can speed it up so we can be at a faster pace than what we're at right now. Okay. Yeah. And what she does is designing, and she's good at designing, and, and she has the concept, she has the story. Um, if she just focuses on that, and separate the two departments, I think um, she has a winner. Okay, so what's yeah. your turnover monthly? Turnover monthly is about like 3,000. Okay, and what's yeah. your cost of sales? Our cost is about like 4,000. So you're losing money? Yeah. So then that means your manufacturing process is, is a challenge? It's, it is a challenge, yeah. Our production is really, it costs way, way more. Okay. Yeah. Would you, a suggestion, mm -hmm. be looking at partnering with other manufacturing companies yes. to perhaps um, look into your, your products mm -hmm. so that you at least focus mainly on what you do best mm -hmm. in, which is designing? Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Yeah? Yeah. Having to have the suggestion of outsourcing um, most of the production cost that actually increases the cost for production is a plus for my business. Um, I didn't think of it initially, but it would actually help me cut costs for my business and help me to produce more um, products than what we're doing at the moment. 
my advice for her is to, to basically ship all her, her production uh, unit and, and give it to people who actually run productions for a living. Um, they know how to cut costs, they can tell you how to cut costs, they, can, they know where to find the right material at what prices, they have negotiated with their suppliers, etc. That's their business, that's what they do well in. Who gets you the most sales? At the moment? Yeah. Is it the toddlers market or the teen? At the moment, it would be the teenagers. The teenagers, yeah. okay. Scaling from one to five? It's about six. Okay, one, I thought one, one to ten. One to five would be like a three. A three? Yeah. And the toddlers? The toddlers is like a two. Okay. Yeah. So the teens are bringing you more money than mm -hmm. the toddlers. Perhaps for now, whilst you are redesigning your, 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 your products mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to test, test your products, um, maybe just focus on the teen okay. um, market. Mm -hmm. And I'd like you to dive a little bit deeper into them. Where are they? Where do they hang out? Mm -hmm. um, um, why would they need your products? Yeah. What's really happening to them? Mm -hmm. um, maybe give me a bit of stats in terms of numbers. Okay. Um, uh, so that we can quantify that with sales. Yeah. Because uh, that's not coming out clearly mm -hmm. currently. Okay. So these are the kind of areas I'd want you to look at for, for tomorrow's um, session. Okay. But what I didn't also hear, I heard about the 50,000 Rand perhaps mm -hmm. going into your missionary. Mm -hmm. But now that I've given you these kind of um, to-do lists or tips, um, I would want to know where the 50,000 Rand now would go to. <laughs> now it would probably, some of it would go into marketing. Yeah. And some of it would have to then still go to equipment, but... Yeah. Product design. Product, yeah, yeah, more like product designing. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. My coaching session with Lorato was very eye-opening. Um, it helped me to actually go deeper into my business and actually figure out why am I actually doing what I'm doing and channeling the right target markets, making sure that it's the most lucrative market that I'm actually going into. Where do you get the 11, the 38 and the 87? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's 29.9 .9 times that amount is going to give you that. You have a lot of competition in the other spaces. I mean, yeah. we see them all over in the malls, all over. I haven't seen a mug like this and it's really catchy. Sasha, welcome back to Making News. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Today you're here to pitch. Mm -hmm. Are you used to pitching or is it your first time doing this kind of a pitch? Actually, I have pitched before, mm -hmm. but not to such a, actually such a panel. So this would be a first time on this type of scenery, yes, basically, yes. Okay, what's different about this type of scenery? Um, the pitches that I did before was just like an elevation pitch. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really like a full on, have to go through your whole business plan, Three, like actually thinking everything through. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it actually different. Look, three judges are inside. They're waiting for you. Thank you. All the best, madam. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Sashili, welcome to the pitch. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, being here. Great, excited. Excited, good, <laughs> yes. good, good. You've got four minutes to mm -hmm. pitch your business. You'll be pitching to Lorato, Martin and myself, after which we'll have a short question and answer session, and then we will deliberate and tell you the way forward. Okay. Your four minutes starts now. Good morning. My name is Ashley, and I own a business called Emoji Mzanzi. What we basically do is that Emoji Mzanzi is a brand that basically takes digitized emoticons to make realistic products. Our new angle is that we'll be including South African culture to actually make it more unique and actually allow a customer to use their own face as an emoji. Why we do what we do is that we realize that an emoji actually brings a message better than telling somebody in words. So if I was angry, uh, an emoji will bring the message more effective than actually telling somebody I'm mad. When is when emojis been standing since December 2015 and it's been successfully growing for a year and 11 months. Where are we based is that we are based in the Vault Triangle and our production is basically done in-house even though we do outsource some of our, do, our production processes. How we do what we do is that we take a digitized emoticon 
we basically download it and then we embroider it onto the material, sourcing the fabric, and then we sew the final product in-house and then we either deliver it off to the client or they come to our offices. What we do in-house is the sewing, is the designing, the creating and the packaging, and what we do outsource is embroidery and printing. Our customer segment is basically our youth, which is 13 to 19, including our 21-year-olds to 24-year-olds. Due to the fact that this age group is very technological savvy, they usually on social media, very expressive and opinionated. And um, the channels that we will be using is your high schools, your universities. So we would have um, basically like have projections within the high schools and universities in order to let them know about this product. Um, after doing my research, I saw that the percentage that I'll be covering is about 76% of girls and 76% of boys under the age of 25, who basically use emojis. Our new angle is that we'll be using South African cultures, example, little like your Sutu or your Kosa or your Pedis, to basically allow somebody who is a South African to express themselves, but still being able to get the message across to another person. We'll be using some of the slang words that they use in South Africa within your culture as well. And we'll be creating emoji products specifically for a certain culture. This gives us a competitive edge due to our competitors that it is 100% South African, it's more unique, it's innovative, and it's something timeless. This is just a projection of the four categories that we have within our company, is the home decor, accessories, clothing and cutlery, and this is the amount of products that we have sold within a year. Um, this was just a projection that I did for the total turnover would be 1,044,900 Rand if we had to stick to selling the certain targets of each category within our business. And lastly, that would be the profits per year if we had to sell also the targets that we set for ourselves um, each year and each month, we would be basically receiving that much profit from each segment within our business. The use of the 50,000 would go to legal consultations um, for patencies, for us creating emojis from scratch, accountants to make sure that the money is being distributed to the correct um, departments, software skills in order for us to do the emojis, uh, molds and demos for certain products that aren't made from here, office equipment and software for graphics. And that is the end. Well, we're going to jump into a quick question and answer session. Okay. I'd like to go back to your numbers. Let's start there. Let's okay. go back to your projections. Uh, I'm now battling to translate. Where do you get the 11, the 38, and the 87? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's 29.9 .9 times that amount is going to give you that. So you because make that's 29 per rand per, per pillow. pillow. And profit. If you sell 1,030 pillows, you will make a profit of 29,000. Yes. But that pillows need to be per year and that's per month. So we need to sell 85 pillows per month, but in a year you need to sell 1,030 pillows. Your, your biggest challenge in, in my view is, is distribution. Yes. In terms of access to market. Because mm -hmm. the numbers that you need to sell are not humongous. Mm -hmm. You know, I think you can sell 85 pillows a month. Absolutely. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. And 970 shirts in a year. Mm -hmm. So I, I, th I think that that's workable. I just battle to understand where you're going to sell it. Because at the moment, mm -hmm. Your best sales happen when you do weekend markets mm -hmm. um, because I believe your, your business is a gifting business. Yeah. So I disagree with you on your positioning about you know, individualization. Mm -hmm. I still maintain that like, I don't think enough people care okay. about an emoji with a pillow with my name on it. I think it's like whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, Marty? I'm just looking at, uh, we're obviously playing the numbers game it's here, okay. essentially. <laughs> so I'm looking at, um, your biggest profit margin, mm -hmm. and I'm noticing that it's in the cutlery space, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a mug like this, and it's really catchy. It is your biggest profit margin. I'd like mm -hmm. to know what made you decide not to put more emphasis on that as a unique product mm -hmm. and spread it over, over all your 
um, very important. highly competitive other lines of mm -hmm. product? Um, because from the get-go, like most of our pillows, they sell mostly on like weekends. The mug's not really as much, but um, it could be a competitive edge if the other competition, they're not doing it as what we're doing. But Do you know that they're not doing it? Have you done the yeah, research? Yeah, I have done, yes, but okay. they're not doing that. They, I know they have different types of mugs, um, but maybe I just haven't done my market, as in like mm. distribution-wise, that well, that people haven't seen it on that level, basically. And then in your, in your paperwork that you've sent through, mm -hmm. I've noticed that there is quite a bit of emphasis put on corporate gifting, etc. I don't see that in your presentation today. Is that something that you're not wanting to look at anymore? Is it not a focus point? Um, I would like to for the future, but it's very difficult to get into it um, because as a small business owner, they don't really want to give you the opportunity. They don't see the need for it. Um, so Who have you tried? I've tried and I've tried um, At which level? It was just a formal level of me just going to basically pitch the idea to them and they weren't really that keen. At branch level? Yeah. Walking into EPSA branch? Okay. Um, towards your last slide, you spoke about where the 50,000 Rand is oh. actually going to, yeah. towards. Mm -hmm. You spoke about consultants, etc. Can you tell us more how the ROI is going to come from that? Okay. Mm. Um, so basically with the legal consultants is basically the patencies that we need in order for us to create it. And then... Um, and how much is that? That is about 5,000. I don't understand patency, there's already this type of product in the market. The reason why we want to go into a new angle using South African and actually creating an emoji from scratch, you need to patent that idea in order to like just keep you safe. And it's 5,000 Rand? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, we're going to deliberate and uh, we'll call you back. Thank you so much. I think they kind of got an idea of what I would need the 50,000 for. Uh, maybe I should have maybe gone into more detail, but I think I described it more than enough. Yeah, I feel like everybody's like overthinking this no, emoji I don't thing. I totally, it's a gift. No. I think we're making it far too deep. Mm. Question is, where would people buy this stuff? Deliberation time? Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Lorata, I'll start with you. I'm, I'm not sure what your thoughts are. I don't know. I, I think I missed I missed the market totally. Um, she has a good product. I think there is something for her in the market. Um, through our coaching sessions, she, she spoke about uh, targeting hospitals and targeting psychologists. Oh, fantastic. And I thought, okay, that's a market mm. thing. No, I'm not sure what happened today. Because mm. she, I think she regressed back to high school mm. and university students. Mm. And I don't think I think there's a market, but um, not for this. Mm. You know, I don't I don't see students buying any of this. You did your pitch. Mm -hmm. Finished it well. But there were a few things that the judges did not understand. Yes. Start with the numbers. Mm -hmm. How do you think that? played against everything else? It could probably counter affect my whole pitch, mm -hmm. um, but hopefully the other details that I did try and break down within the profits and the turnover would make up for the fact that I didn't break the 50,000 rand down. Look, I just don't think she's researched her, her market correctly. I loved when I saw in her you know, in her story that mm. she was looking at corporate gifting because one thing I can tell you is that corporates are looking for innovative. I think this is a shocking idea as a corporate gift. I love the, the mug. Yeah, as, there's as, a, lot as of other a cute gift. Yeah. yeah, but there's like, a lot of other emojis you can gift, do. As a corporate gift, I think it's a shocking no, idea. No, I, First, I think it's a shocking idea as a corporate gift. I think it's a shocking idea for hospitals and... and Why? And, uh, wait, and psychologists. I think we're making it far too deep. Mm. Question is, where would people buy this stuff? Mm. Fine. When I go to the hospital in the gift shop, yeah. when I'm there buying flowers or whatever it is that I'm buying for the person that I'm coming to visit, yeah. this is their cute, I will buy it. Mm. 
it has something to do with get well soon, da, 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 you know. Mm. So where do you find gift cards mm. is where you'll buy this. Or you're focusing on markets and you're trying to spread out to as many weekend markets as possible because people are walking around looking for stuff to buy, mm. typically something for themselves or a gift. Mm. Or you are doing what one of her competitors has done really successfully, which is find kiosk and pop-up spaces in airports and shopping malls and, and I know one of our competitors, I mean, she flies, she's making a killing. And it's purely the pillows. The competitor doesn't do anything else but the pillows. And all it is is, so I disagree. I feel like everybody's like overthinking this no, emoji I don't thing. Dis I don't it's believe. a gift. No. Do you think that they really understood your pitch and what you're trying to say? I would probably say there's about 80% chance that they understood, but there's a few glitches, mm -hmm. as I would say the 50,000 rand of the whole breakdown. That's probably just what they didn't fully, fully understand. Mm -hmm. She's got to find a, a market that has not been penetrated. The problem is, yes, go, maybe in the Val, but if, she's get, if she moves beyond that, the, the, the competitors are going to kill her. Her pricing, Pepsi, is completely mm. horrifying. Mm, I'm, I'm like, is your it cost, too high it's too high. Yeah. The cost is too high the or, the, or the retail too price too is too high? The cost is too high. Okay. You know, so she's not making margin there. She hasn't taken into consideration if she has to ship that thing. So she's making 20 odd rand on a pillow. What if you need to be transporting, going to a different place? That hasn't been factored in. Mm. And that, that's worrying. And this, is, and this is why I was saying the numbers are a little bit vague. It's, it's no, the worrying. numbers are vague. Yeah. And you can, you don't, you I, can rest, I can rest my bottom dollar that her competitors are bringing this in from somewhere else. Mm. And they're oh, not, no, manufacturing no, no, they're not manufacturing it locally. locally. So they're probably paying because for that pillow that they're selling at 180 Rand, mm. they're probably paying 40 Rand. Yeah, her, her cost base is far too high Correct. Yeah. because she wants to make locally. Mm. And I think that's great. It's, it's great to create employment. It, it, I mean, I think they sh it should be encouraged that more people produce locally. Mm. But I also have a view that she needs to build a business. So if your business is to survive, mm. maybe she shouldn't be producing locally exactly. for now. Mm. It's much cheaper. But also, in fairness, she's not doing big enough quantities to yeah. go to China and, That's and fine, but, run. So but her only option is to produce locally. I, I would actually want to ask you that question because we spoke about that yesterday. Say, how about you actually just close off your manufacturing hub and just find someone else that does this for a living? They could source the material cheaper. They have all the connections, they have all the links to you to get this at a good price. A and point. literally, her job would be just sales, mm -hmm. you know? Sales and marketing. Yeah, you just create a lean model. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, Pepsi, just to add on to what she was saying is, I think there is a market for this. I really do. I think corporates are spending a lot of money, they really are spending a lot of money to actually get a cohesive environment. And, and like, people, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, people, I don't know if I agree. But okay, no, fine. Listen, people, okay, you, you've okay. got depressed Think people. About... You've got depressed people coming to work. I mean, if you see this and you're sitting on this, it, it just adds a smile. All the best. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Sashini, welcome back. Thank you. How do you think you did on a scale of one to ten? About a six. About a six? Yes. Okay. It's probably quite fair. Um, okay. So what we're going to do mm -hmm. is we're going to give you feedback. Okay. And it's not one-way traffic, so you're welcome to, 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 to argue, okay. to have a different view. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> firstly, I've got, I think you've got a really cute idea and there's a place for it in the market. Um, however, I think that if I had to ask you to do one thing at the moment, mm -hmm. would be to understand that you've got potentially three verticals to your business. The first one is your corporate market, which I, I didn't really, I mean like, I'm still iffy about it. <coughs> these guys think it's a good idea and I trust them. So you've got your corporate market, you have got a market that you need to focus on, mm -hmm. whatever that is, but you need to pick a focus. Okay. The third vertical that you've got in your business is online, 
and you don't have to do it yourself. There are other e-commerce providers out there and they can stock your product. Um, Martine made an example. Some nice gentleman got her flowers that came with an emoji wallet, I think it was. Yeah, you it's a little purse. Little emoji purse with the flowers, you know, and, and okay. it was an e-commerce platform that that order was processed through. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's, that's my feedback. Okay. Martine? Okay, essentially, you know, in any business, research is critical and research to understand not only your competitors but the broader spectrum in terms of your market that you're wanting to penetrate what disposable income there is you know mm -hmm. all of those types of things in all honesty i don't believe that you've done enough research you know that your competitors or the competition in your environment is extremely extremely rife there's a lot of competition in your environment. So what you need to do is you need to um, go and see what they're doing and what your sweet spot is, because you've got to sell on a sweet spot. Donato? I could see from your numbers that um, there's quite a lot happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I could pick up that you're doing everything, and that's why your numbers are so high. Um, just to clarify your manufacturing model, give it to the people that do manufacturing. They would probably produce these products that you have at a, at a low cost for okay. you, so that you can just focus on selling. As an investor, I don't, I don't know why I would give you 50,000 Rand. I don't think you've really addressed where this 50,000 Rand is gonna go into. I'm also not of the opinion that you're ready to come back yet um, and particularly because of the lack of research um, and market research mm -hmm. um, and then also the strategy around your, your business. You haven't, you don't have a clear understanding and strategy yet. So thank you, we wish you the thank best you. of luck and I hope it's been worth your while. Thank All you so much. Thank All you. The best. All the best. Uh, my journey on making moves was very interesting, um, something different, something new. But it really made me actually look into aspects of my business that I never really focused on. Um, it made me think of ways in which I could take my business to the next level. And I'm actually looking forward to the next steps ahead regarding my business.